Je m'appelle Mathieu, euh, je suis désolé, j'ai fait cette présentation en, en anglais. Je suis un roast beef, mais roast beef végétarien. That's about what, so. All right, um, so yeah, I, I work for Oracle these days. Um, I have a slide. I'm not talking about Oracle products. We don't need this slide, that's fine. Um, I'm a very lucky boy. I get to work on almost anything I want to. Um, my, um, my, my remit is to do cool stuff, do fun things with Linux that make Oracle look good. And that's actually terrifying. Um, because now I have to choose projects to work on that are worth this kind of freedom. Oh, oh. <laughs> Everything's all good? Okay, great, thank you. Yes, so when I, when I was first given this opportunity, I had a terrible time trying to decide what it is I should work on. And I found this talk that I've linked at the bottom here. I'll, I'll put the slides available. Um, this, is a, this is a talk by uh, Richard Hamming. Hamming codes, Hamming weight, Hamming distance, we've all heard of, of Hamming. He was uh, at Bell Labs, and he, he gave this talk at Bell Labs, talking about how you can do Nobel Prize winning research. I'm not doing Nobel Prize winning research, but the, the, the principles are the same. You have to put aside your modesty. You have to say, I can do great things. And you have, to, you have to understand the field you're working in. You have to learn what the big problems are. You don't have to work on all the big problems, but you should know what they are. You should think about them. Not all the time, but when something comes up, when you learn something, you should think to yourself, what bearing does this have on any of the top 10 problems in my field, in what I'm working on? And that has led me to work on quite a lot of projects over the last few years. Um, and I've chosen four of them to talk about in this talk. Um, because they actually make sense to talk about together. They weren't originally conceived of to talk about to work together. Uh, some, some of them were, but most, mostly they weren't. Uh, but it, it, it made sense. Like when they, they, all, they all came together and they've all landed this year or last year and together they, they, they make for a very compelling story. But before I get into that, I want to talk about something one of my colleagues did. I didn't know he was going to do this. Vigard put together this lovely cheat sheet, which includes linked lists. Maybe not now, but later. I want you to take a pen and cross out this part of the, the slide. Do not use these APIs. Do not use linked lists. And I'm going to explain why. Because linked lists are an immoral data structure. <laughs> Apparently, I should have said immortal, because we're never going to kill them. But if you're using them for anything, anything, where you care about performance, where you care about, uh, just you, 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 are, you are committing a sin. Because your CPU, you, you, you write sequential code, but your CPU is inherently parallel. It's trying to extract all the work it can do from this sequential stream of instructions. And CPU manufacturers have invested decades, billions of dollars, in trying to extract parallelism. Uh, this, is, this is an example, my laptop right here. I've, I've run tests on it. I went and found the documentation for it. Um, it can do six instructions per clock cycle. Wow. And it's running at 2.8 gigahertz. Now, if, it, if, it's, if you're using like, the, the, the hyperthreading, you know, each, you're, you're getting six instructions for both hyperthreads. You're not, you're not getting one each. Um, but still, if, if you've got a cache, if, if you have to wait 
for an L3 cache miss, like go all the way to main memory and come back, that's almost that, that's 1,600 instructions. Think how much work you can do with 1,600 instructions. It's criminal to do an L3 cache miss when you didn't need to. Or to put it another way, if you can spend 800 extra cycles to avoid an L3 cache miss, you're ahead, you're winning. And this is why linked lists are evil. Because with a linked list, the CPU can't run ahead of you. It can see you're doing a linked list walk. It under it, like, the, 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 the CPUs are, are just that good. They, they, they can figure out, oh yeah, he's doing a linked list walk. Yeah, yeah, I understand this. But they can't do anything about it. Because you can, fetch, you can prefetch the next thing that you're going to look at, but you can't fetch the next next thing. Because it doesn't know where it's going to point to. And this is why we hear things like speculation. It's saying, well, this is about a kilobyte away. Maybe the next one's a, next one's a kilobyte away. But if you randomly shuffle your, your linked list, it has no hope. It can't do it. But an array. An array can be prefetched. Because you, if you have an array of pointers, and you reference the first one, and you reference the second one, and you reference the third one. The CPU picks up on pretty quickly. You're going to dereference the fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth one, and it can go off and prefetch all of those things. And now you're not waiting anymore. All of the data you're going to operate on has at least made it to the L3 cache, maybe even to the L2 or L1 cache. And you will get a huge speed improvement just by switching from a linked list to an array. I'll spend a bit of time on this because this is really important. This is, this is the one thing I want you to walk away from my talk saying, oh yeah, I shouldn't use linked lists. So I wrote a program to demonstrate how bad it is. It is 12 times faster. And, and, and this is actually simulating, I appreciate I'm not talking to a room full of MM people, but when you go into memory reclaim, the, um, the, the, there's a thing called the LRU list, the least re recently used list. I'm simulating that. I'm simulating a four gigabyte machine walking its LRU list. It is 12 times faster to do it as an array than as a linked list. The way that the linked list is currently written, the way we currently do things, we could be 12 times faster at getting memory. Well, at least at walking the list to get at memory and manage memory. That's a lot of performance we're leaving on the table. I haven't done anything about this specifically the walking the LRU list. I have about a thousand other things I need to do first before I can do that. But I'm getting there and talking about it is part of that. And, you know, I, 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 I don't know the whole kernel, but I do know that we have thousands, if not tens of thousands of linked lists in the kernel and I want to get rid of all of them. And that, that's not a task I can achieve by myself, not before I die. And I, you know, I'm, I'm going to need help. I need you, who understand your bit of the kernel, to remove linked lists where you can. Because it's killing us. 12 times performance win on my laptop. Who knows what it is on your phone? Who knows what it is on the server? Like, this is, this, this is important. All right. This is a talk about page faults. I'm going to start talking about page faults now. So I think it's important to, I understand, I'm not talking to memory management people. I, I, I want you to understand that this is, this is an overview. This is a very, this is a great simplification of how Linux handles a page fault. So when you call mmap, we create this data structure that we refer to as a VMA because we do not enjoy saying VM area structs every time that we want to talk about it. So Computer people like acronyms. We call them VMAs. Um, so, anytime you call mmap, you probably got a new VMA. Sometimes the kernel will merge VMAs. It, it, it doesn't matter. The point is, in the page fault handler, we are handed the virtual address that the CPU tried to execute, tried to dereference, and there was it didn't know what to do with it. It could not get the translation from this virtual address to the physical address that contains. The, your data. So all we have to go on is the virtual address. So the first thing we do is, is we say, well, what, what kind of memory is this? Like what, what mmap call is, does this virtual address correspond to? And if the answer is none, the, 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 the application has done something stupid and will send it a signal to tell it that it should probably die now. 
So the first thing, yeah, so that's the first thing we do. We, 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 we look up what kind of memory was the process trying to access. And then we walk the page tables. Again, I, I appreciate I'm not talking to memory management people. So uh, page tables, the, the, these tend to be hardware data structures. Some CPUs define them in software. Let's not worry about that. Let's, let's talk about x86 and ARM64, where it's a hardware definition. The, uh, the, the hardware will walk the page table. And in fact, has already, the hardware already walked the page tables for us because it was trying to figure out the, what, how to do the virtual to physical address. And the, it couldn't do it. So we're going to walk down the page tables too, because we need to know where it was trying to look. And we'll allocate page tables along the way down, because it's, it's a, it's a multi-level tree. right? So we'll, we'll just keep walking all the way down the page tables, allocating memory as we go. <coughs> all right. So now, now, we, now we know where to put it, and we know what kind of thing we have. Um, in general, there are two types of VMAs. There's anonymous memory, and that means things like your stack, your heap. Um, there are various other things you can do to create uh, uh, anonymous VMAs, but that's, that, that, that's the important, that, that's the kind of thing we're talking about. We're talking about memory that does not have a name, which is why it's anonymous. The other kind is file backed. So if you've M mapped a file, you know, maybe you're, you M mapped your executable, maybe you've, you've, you've M mapped some, some data, um, we, that, that, that's, a, that's a file backed. Um, a file-backed VMA. So if we've got an anonymous one, skipping over the possibility of swap briefly, because I'm trying to simplify this, uh, we just allocate a page of memory. And we zero it, because we know that memory comes pre-zeroed for us, because we don't want to leak, other, leak whatever, memory, what, whatever data was in that memory. So we zero that page of memory, and we put an entry, we, 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 find, out, we find out the, uh, the physical address of that, and we put the physical address into the page table. And then we return to user space. And this time, user space will retry the fault, and this time it will find the, uh, the, the, the physical translation for that virtual address, and we're done. Um, if it's file-backed, then we go and look in the page cache. We find the page, hopefully it's there. Once it's there, we will again insert that page into the page table. Insert the physical address of that page into the page tables. Return to user space. User space retries the fault. Everything's happy. It's a fair amount of work. I mean, it's, it's pretty impressive how fast we are at it, but it's, it's, it, we're doing a fair amount of work. So, the four projects that I want to talk about. First one's the maple tree. So, we we, we start out by like I said, looking up the VMA, the first thing we do. Um, originally, when Linus added the entire concept of VMAs back in 0.98, because <laughs> Linux did not originally do uh, page memory, uh, it was a singly linked list. And so <laughs> walk, walk, walking, walking the VMAs was simply iterating through the list. I mean, it was, it was sorted. So you, know, you, you knew that once you'd gone past it, you were past it. But generally, we, we were just looking at each VMA in the, this process had mapped and saying, is this it? So you know, <laughs> surprisingly, it took until after 1.0 was released for somebody to say, hey, perhaps we should have a tree. And so an AVL tree was added. Um, and so now we only need to search through log n of the instead of n um, uh, VMAs in order to find out uh, is, which which one is it. Um, we replaced the AVL tree with a red black tree. Um, I, I in in two thousand one. I think this was actually a bad decision. Uh, a red black tree is slightly less balanced than an AVL tree. The advantage of the red black tree is that inserts happen in constant time. It is up to three rotations of the tree in order to rebalance a red-black tree. Whereas an AVL tree could be log n rebalances in order to do an insertion. Because an AVL tree is much more tightly balanced. But on the other hand, that means that the red-black tree can become so much more unbalanced. It can be twice as deep on one side as it is on the other side. Uh, an AVL tree can be up to one deeper on one side of this as it is on the other side. So we're penalizing 
lookups in order to make insertions faster, insertions and deletions. Um, I don't know about you, but I take way more page faults than I do call mmap. So I think, I think this was a bad idea. But I think the reason that they did it was that they thought that holding, the, 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 the delaying page faults while they rebalanced the tree was a bad thing. And I mean, that's, that's a defensible position. Um, I feel it's one that probably should have been reevaluated before 2022. Um, but in 2022, we, uh, we, 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 we wrote a generic data structure called the maple tree. Um, my, my colleague, Liam Howlett, and I, he did most of the work. Um, I, 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 I provided um, criticism and coffee. Um, but yes, we were actually able to get rid of the linked list, which was nice, um, and the red black tree. Um, and we also got rid of a, a, people had noticed that looking up VMAs in a red black tree was kind of slow. So there was actually a, 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 a cache sitting in front of the red black tree. It turned out we didn't need that once we had the maple tree. It was fast enough to just do, do the actual lookup. So um, that, 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 was, that was a big incentive for people to, uh, to get it in. So you're probably asking at this point, well, well, okay, you've said this new data structure, the maple tree. It is an in-memory RCU safe B tree. And B trees were originally in, uh, invented in order to store stuff on disk. But memory is now far enough away from the CPU, and like I said, 1600 in instructions for, a cache, for an L3 cache miss, it's worth using storage data structures in order to access stuff in memory. Um, so uh, red, both red black trees and AVL trees are binary trees. E at each level of the tree, you've either found the VMA you're looking for, or it's to the left, or it's to the right. Well, we have a branching factor of around eight. It's somewhere between 10 and 16, depend, uh, well, somewhere between 8 and 12 at each um, intermediate level. And then uh, we could theoretically have up to uh, 16 VMAs in, in the, the root of the data structure. Uh, that would be very unlikely to happen, but it could happen. Um, now, because we're no longer storing the, uh, the, 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 the data, the, the the red black tree is embedded into each VMA. We're not doing that anymore. So actually, we've shrunk the VMA um, by five pointers. So that's 40, 40 bytes smaller. On the other hand, we now have these 256 byte nodes that we're allocating in order to store pointers to them. It's actually a slight win but uh, it, for, for, for most things. But that does mean that when we are um, having to rebalance the tree, um, we, have to we have to allocate new nodes. And we have to do that rather more often than you might think because it is RCU safe, which means that readers no longer need to take a lock. And I'm going to get back to that in a bit because that's really important. Um, and, and, and the typical numbers that we're talking about are between about 20 and 1,000 for your normal system. If you're using the electric fence debugger, you can have hundreds of thousands, millions of VMAs, because every memory allocation gets put in its own red zone. Like each one gets its own VMA, and there's guard pages around it and everything, and it, it, it utterly swamps the system. You actually have to, if, if you're doing serious debugging with electric fence, you have to increase the number of VMAs that you're allowed to create. It, it's, it's, um, it's absolutely insane, and it's absolutely wonderful. And uh, I think these days we have better tools, but it does still exist. Um, so I've said it's RCU safe. What exactly do I mean by that? As I, I, I think Paul said earlier this conference, um, we, we allow races. RCU is basically saying races are fine, but what do we mean? Like what, what guarantees do we want to provide? And the one that we settled on is that if a, VM, if a VMA is present before, before the RCU lock is taken and continues to exist during the whole time that the RCU uh, read lock is held, then you will definitely find it on a lookup. Paul is giving a thumbs up, so we've, we've said the right things. Um, if one is added during, the walk, during the, the walk you're doing, we may or may not find it. If one is removed during the walk, we may or may not find it. 
But that's okay, because we can't tell. It could have been removed just before we took the RC read block, or it could have been removed just after, or it could have been added just before, it could have been added just after, because there's no synchronization here. We, 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 we're deliberately saying we're not doing synchronization. Things can race at the same time. And that's okay for page faults, because who writes their applications so that you've got one thread that's doing mmap and munmap, and another thread that's trying to take page faults on whether or not there is a VMA there? That, that's, that's not a thing. Like People don't do that. Um, Sysbot does that. We need to be very careful to not make a mess when we do this. Like it's, it's, it, but we don't, we don't have to care about a normal program doing it. We, we just have to make sure that we're not introducing a security hole. <coughs> All right, so, so, so that's the maple tree. And that, 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 that went in first of, of, of well, yeah, that, that, that went in first. And, and, then, and then we started working on per BMA locking. Um, so the VMA tree, you, you'll notice that 2.0 and 1996 are rather after we introduced VMAs, and that's because in its early days Linux was single-threaded. Once we decided, oh yeah, we might want to support multiple threads in a single program, we had to add a semaphore because this data structure is shared between all of the threads. And so if one thread is calling mmap and another is doing the walk, we need to make sure they don't collide. Makes sense. Uh, in 2001, we changed it from being a simple semaphore to a read-write semaphore. Um, and that introduces its own set of problems, because if readers have priority over writers, then an endless stream of page faults can delay a call to mmap indefinitely. But if writers have priority over readers, you, 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 you have a couple of, um, couple of threads taking a page fault, and then another thread calls mmap, and then every other thread that calls, that, that takes a page fault has to wait for the mmap to happen, which is waiting for the other page faults to happen. And maybe those page faults are on uh, fileback VMAs, and so we're actually waiting for the disk to return memory. We hacked around that problem, but there's, there's, there's still problems. There, there were still problems. And so what we decided we, ended, we needed to do, and we went through a lot of different, um, a, a lot of different revisions of how can we do this, what should we do, uh, we ended up adding per VMA read-write semaphores. So how does that work? Well, at the beginning of the page fault handler, we take the RCU read lock, and then we, we walk the maple tree which is designed for this. Uh, so we load the VMA out of the maple tree, and then we do a read try lock on the per VMA lock. So this isn't really, we're not really using this as a semaphore on the read side. On the, on the right side, yes, it's a we're using it as a semaphore, but really what we're doing here is we're using it as a ref count. It's a ref count plus a wait queue. But it's, and, it, and it's one that somebody else has written for us, and it's someone else, one that somebody else has debugged, and one that all of the uh, lock dep understands. And you know, it, it, we, we, we could open code this because we're not quite using it as, a, a, uh, as, as an RWSM, but it's way better to do it this way. Um, so then w the, the other thing we added was a sequence counter. We did two sequence counters. We added one to the mm struct, so all of the threads share this mm struct, and they have, an, an, and we have a, a sequence count, and then we have one in the VMA. And if the two are equal, that means somebody has locked this VMA. And you're probably thinking, well, then how did you get the read try lock? Because Sometimes the writers need to drop that lock. It's, it's complicated. But <laughs> the, the, the read side, is, the lookup side is dead simple. All we're doing is loading two integers and we're checking do they match. And if they match, then the VMA is almost certainly locked. And so we'll fall back in this case. We, we, don't, we don't guarantee to handle all page faults using this method. We just handle, well, almost we, we, we fail in one in four billion times 
I like those odds. I would play, I would play Russian roulette with those odds. And what, one, 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 once, we've, once we've checked that, we will drop the RC read lock because we, we, we're guaranteed that this VMA won't be freed because we've got a read lock on it, or an incremented ref count on it. And uh, we, we won't look at the maple tree again, so we don't care if the nodes are being freed. So that's great. So what does it take to add support for per VMA locking? Unfortunately, we have to go and modify each architecture or at least the, the, the ones that, that care enough in order to add it. And so far, that is uh, five architectures, ARM64, PowerPC, S390, x86, and RISC-V. Uh, RISC-V came in one release later. That's fine. I don't, I don't mind that. If you maintain a different architecture, I suggest that you copy and paste what we've done to every other architecture. Uh, there is somebody who's, who's trying to unify them all, and it's a valiant effort, and I wish him the best, but I don't think he's going to succeed. I would suggest copying and pasting. Um, so that was for anonymous VMAs, and we did anonymous VMAs first because uh, that was where we thought the biggest win was, and it's where uh, Surin, who was doing the majority of the work on it, uh, Surin's at Google, uh, he, he, he was more comfortable with anonymous memory. He knew it better, he understood it. And I said to him, don't worry about it, I'll take care of the page cache side. And then I got distracted with some of my other projects and it ended up not making it to 6.5 at all, but rather into 6.6. During which time he had already done swap and user fault FD support. Yay. Uh, so it, it, there's this big glut of new features that are now coming in, uh, but fortunately they're all in 6.6 and uh, so they're, they're, they'll be in the next big stable release, uh, the long next big long-term support release. So that's good. Um, the support that's in 6.6 .6 for the page cache only supports, um, it, it, it only works if you don't need to do I.O. Um, partly I just didn't have time to make sure, and partly usually when you're going to uh, fault something in, uh, we've done read ahead, and those pages are in the page cache already. So it's fine. Like this, this will work almost always. And so this was the big win. It was easy, and I did it. Um, you'll notice further down the slide, page cache faults that re need reads, they might make it into 6.7. Uh, I sent the patches to do that this morning. So nobody's looked at them yet, nobody's reviewed them. Uh, I've tested them, but you know, other people are going to have their own benchmarks and workloads and, and tests to run on them. So you know, it's possible that they'll miss the 6.7 merge window, but uh, I'm, I'm optimistic. I mean, we're, we're at what, uh, RC3 at this point, so I'd say we've got another three weeks to make sure that they're in good enough shape to, uh, to make the merge window. Um, there is still work to do uh, in, in, until last night. The, those two things were under. More support is possible, but uh, more support is still possible because there is still work to be done on huge TLBFS. We, we, we just haven't bothered to do that work yet. Um, I don't think it will be terribly hard. It's not like huge TLBFS needs to go and do I.O. Or, or any of the complicated things. So if you're looking to write a quick patch and get uh, job offers, I understood uh, from a previous talk, um, the code's right there, and all you have to do is, is, is read it and understand what's going on. Oh, okay, this is hard. Uh, <laughs> but it, 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 seriously, it, it should not be a large patch to write. It's just that nobody's done the work yet. Um, where, where there is a bigger problem is device drivers, because you can call MMAP on a huge number of device drivers, uh, graphics drivers, um, it, you, you, can, you, can, you can do MMAP on um, network sockets, but that's already been fixed. That, that already works. I should have put that on the slide. I, I didn't think to do that. That, that, was, that was silly of me, because that, that, I think that made it into 6.5. Um, but yeah, so a, a lot of, some device drivers, unfortunately, depend on the MMAP lock being held. But auditing all of the device drivers to know whether or not they actually do depend on the MMAP lock being held for synchronization with some other part of the driver, um, that's, that, that, that's a big job. 
So at some point we are going to need to be able to mark device drivers as having support, as, as, as not needing the MMAP lock to be held, as, as, as being able to be called with just the VMA lock held. Um, I, I haven't spent too much time thinking about it. This is just something we know we're going to need to do and we haven't done yet. Oh, that sounds like another project somebody could take on. That's, that's a big one. That's a complicated one. I mean, that's going to involve, involve negotiating with people, which is always the, the hard part of it. So switching gears from... That, that was all faster page faults. Well, faster and more scalable page faults. Um, now let's get to fewer page faults. Uh, so, large folios. I've given a lot of talks about folios in the past. I don't want to belabor the point here. The basic idea is that uh, we shouldn't be managing memory in four kilobyte chunks because that means we get a million entries on a list and lists are bad. Um, so the idea is, you know, if we're managing memory in 16 kilobyte chunks, 64 kilobyte chunks, we, we, we've shrunk the size of the list by a factor of four or a factor of 16, and things get an awful lot better. Um, this does require support in the file system, because now the file system needs to understand that um, you know, the, 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 the page it is supposed to write back is not four kilobytes in size anymore, it's an arbitrary size, and it needs to write back the whole thing and not just the, 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 the first four kilobytes of it, and many other similar things. Um, I, I, did, I did the work on XFS, um, and then Dave Howells took on doing AFS, and he's also doing a few other network file systems, they're in, they're in progress. Um, the Eero FS guys did, uh, did landed their code in 6.2, that's really good. Um, other file systems, um, everyone tells me they're looking at it. I don't have time to do everybody's file system for them. We've got something like 60 file systems in the tree. Um, I, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm just not going to go and do the Amiga fast file system. I'm, I'm, I'm just not. I'm sorry. It's <laughs> this is below my level of caring. But um, I will happily work with anyone who wants to do their file system. I'm, I'm happy to advise, to review patches, and to work with you. Um, so the, the, the initial code for large folios did, uh, did read ahead. It, 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 it looked at your it looks at your patterns of, of access, and we've always done read-ahead, but now the read-ahead code doesn't just do larger chunks of read-ahead. It, 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 you know, it used to start out by pre-reading 128 kilobytes, and it would do 256 kilobytes if it seemed to be useful. Well, now it actually grows the size of the chunk of memory that we allocate, so it, it would be 128 kilobytes at first. It, it does uh, 32 four-kilobyte pages. But if that's successful, it will do 16, 16 kilobyte pages. So it's, it's grown to 256 kilobytes, and it has grown the size of each chunk that it's bringing into memory. So that's fun. Uh, and then in 6.6, .6, I added the uh, support for creating large folios on write. And so if you do a one megabyte write, we'll actually allocate you a one megabyte folio and fill it, and then tell the file system, hey, you have to write back that entire megabyte all at once. It's grand. It really shrinks the list. It, 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 got, it got the IOPS up on some benchmark by like a factor of five. It was crazy. Um, but what, where, where the real excitement in MM is right now is also doing this for anonymous memory. So when you take a pay, so you, you know, we probably don't want to do it for the stack, but we probably do want to do it for the heap. Because you, 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 you probably don't want to start paging out your stack in 64 kilobyte chunks. You probably want to leave that in 4 kilobytes. But, you know, if somebody's done a, a, a 1 gigabyte allocation for their, their malloc library's done a 1 gigabyte allocation, maybe we want to page out in larger chunks than 4 kilobytes at once. That's, that, that's very much work in progress. I'm doing my best not to get terribly involved in it because I don't understand anonymous memory very well. And the people who do understand anonymous memory well have got excited and um, it's, it, it, it's, it's awesome. Um, Ryan Roberts, I would say, is, is leading this effort and um, 
we 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 have uh, people from um, uh, people from Intel working with them. So I've got ARM and Intel working together, and uh, all is good in the world. So now that we have large folios, how does this tie into doing fewer page faults? Well, we had to do some new PT manipulation interfaces for that because we, um, when, when, when we insert page table entries into the page table, um, each are, the, the, these, these things are defined by the hardware. And so the generic Linux code can't you know, twiddle the bits correctly to, to make it work on every single architecture. We need architecture support for that. And so there, there's, there's a set of APIs that we have implemented by each CPU architecture that says this is how you turn a physical address into a page table entry. And so we, we, we had this function called set PT at. There's a bit of a story between how we got the at added to the end of that. Uh, but it can only insert a single page table entry. So you say, here, here, here's, here's my address. And it says, OK. Here's, here's another address. OK. Um, and that would have been fine. We could have just said, yeah, we're going to call that in a loop. But then we have, but we have architectures, and I'm going to choose ARM64 as the example here because Ryan's doing such a great job. It, ARM actually has two interesting uh, facilities, and m m most architectures have one or the other, but ARM's actually got both. They have something called PTE Cont. And, and that says, OK, this is a four kilobyte entry, but it's actually part of a 16 entry block or a four entry block, which, so, which maps the 16K page. And so when, when, when the CPU sees any one of these, it knows that that entire 16K is present. Uh, it all has the same dirtiness. It all has the same access time. The, the, it, is, it is treating it as if it is a single 16 kilobyte or 64 kilobyte page. The other facility that ARM has is you don't need to set that bit. You can just put eight consecutive entries, which refer to eight consecutive physical pages, into the page table. And when the CPU looks at one of them, well, it's actually it's loading a cache line. So it says, ah, I'm going to sneak a look at all the other ones in the same cache line. Oh, they're all consecutive. Ah, I know what to do. I can optimize this, because CPU people are good at optimizations. Uh, AMD has that functionality as well. Um, I'm not aware of Intel having that functionality. I have shouted at Intel that they need to add that functionality. As far as I know, they still haven't. But there are people from Intel who are working on this. So maybe they're thinking about it. Or maybe these are people on the software side of Intel who have got sick of the hardware people not listening to them and have decided to make a point. I don't know. That's internal politics. That's not my problem. But what, it, what all of this means is that we need an interface that says, I want to add n consecutive pages to the page table. And so that's what these new functions do. Well, the first one is, is, is that. The set PTEs. We, we insert n consecutive page table entries. But then there are other things we need to do as well. We need, um, we need to be able to flush an entire folio out of the data cache. We need to be able to flush consecutive pages out of the instruction cache. And we, I, 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 I'm not going to explain what update MMU cache range does. Just, just take it from me. We need that to act on n consecutive pages. Um, we have made the guarantee to the architectures that we are going to operate on only a single folio. So if there are two folios adjacent to each other and they happen to be physically contiguous in memory, that's going to be two calls. We're guaranteeing that. So because that, that, that helps architectures know, oh yeah, okay, that, this is, I'm not going to have loop over folios. I'm getting a single folio, but multiple pages in that one folio. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to do that. So I said, I work on a lot of projects. These are projects that have either landed in the tree since January, or I'm still working on them, or I have ideas and I want to work on them. Um, I'm busy. 
Um, if anyone wants to help, so some some of these, uh, so I, I'm, I, I mean, I, I was involved in all four of the projects I've just talked about, but in in different roles, right? I I, I was I, I I'm leading the large folios effort. I am advising on the maple tree. I was contributing to the uh, uh, the the the, um, the locking changes, the the uh, RCU lookup. Um, and I, 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 I took a patch from Yin Feng Wei of, of Intel and I made it my own with the set PTs work. So I, I kind of stole that project. Um, I am happy to act as an advisor. If any of these grab your attention and you say, oh, I've always wanted to work on that too, let's talk. Because I love working with people. Because no man is an island, and at least all of these people have been instrumental in some way in getting the projects to where they are. Maybe they reviewed patches, maybe they provided feedback, uh, maybe they've written some of the patches themselves. I have XFS people here, I, I have um, Mary Management people, that, um, some of my colleagues. Um, just lots and lots of people have helped get all of these projects landed, and I'm very, very grateful to all of them because I, I, I couldn't do it without them. Like, you know, I, I come up here and I present all this work I've done, and it, 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 it's amazing, right? But there was all the pain and suffering that went first, and, and the bad ideas. I'm not presenting you with the bad ideas that, that people said, What are you doing? Come on, you need to do it this way. It's like, Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah you're right. So, you know, we, we, we don't necessarily all treat each other the best at times, but I do find that the memory management community is is pretty nice to each other most of the time. Uh, and uh, yeah, if, if if you want to get involved, memory management is in an exciting place right now. And I never thought I'd say that. I, I, I swore I would never be a memory management developer back in like 2002. And um, yeah, here we are, me, me standing on stage saying, hey, Mary Management's a great place to work. Thank you. Oh, first off, there's a lot of really cool stuff there. I mean, uh, some of the improvements in page faults, I mean, it's things that people have been looking for for a long time, so it's really good to see those get in there. Um, I'm going to have to take issue with one thing, though. Um, I'm going to assert that any statement, including the one I'm making right now, that unconditionally declares something to be immoral is itself immoral. <laughs> I think it is immoral to steal so much CPU, to, to waste your CPU in this way. Oh. I, I, I really do. It's well, if you have a milli industry length list, okay, that's a problem even if you had um, some kind of magic memory like we used to have when everything was slow, you know, where it didn't have caches. But if that linked list was in your L1 cache, and a small linked list could, is that really that much of a problem? And, and I agree that, uh, that uh, in fact, in RCU we've got some cases, we probably need more, where we had the linked list and we made it be, it's still a linked list, but it's a linked list of pages of pointers. So um, I agree that we Probably, especially if you've got a million industry linked lists. I mean, what are you doing to yourself, right? But I think we need to make sure we're taking a balance, taking a overall good approach with the looking at what the actual problem is and what the actual costs are in the various places. I mean, how, how much memory do you have in your laptop, Paul? I think it's 32 meg or 32 gig. Excuse me. 32 uh, gig. Okay, so 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 you've got an 8 million entry LRU list. I'm not saying that's good. I'm not saying it's good either. But if, <laughs> if, that, if that was a uh, tree of depth uh, uh, 20, it's probably OK. It's still linked. If that was a linked list of things that were you know, of a certain size, that might be OK. If it was a million entry array, that might be a problem for other reasons, right? Well, actually, it's already an array. It's, it's called memmap. Mm -hmm. And 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 that I mean that's how struct page is allocated, right? It's 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 64 bytes at a time, sure. but it's uh, on, on on your laptop at what, least it, it's it's a single array that is 64 times 
eight million in size. But uh, walking that whole array to look for the LRUs might be bad for other reasons. Maybe it's better than the linked list. I don't know, right? And also, it's ordered by address, by physical address, not? Yeah. Or am I confused? Yeah. And so your LRU list is unlikely to be in physical address order. Yeah. But anyway, I, I'm not going to argue. Having a million entry linked list was a bad idea. Well, it was impossible when my first computers were used. We didn't have that much memory. So, you know. It, it actually wasn't a bad idea. Um, CPUs only started to get this good sort of 10, 15 years ago. Uh, certainly when Linux was first invented. It, I, 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 like, I, I, I ran the same benchmark that shows my laptop's 12 times faster to do a million entry array on, I'm going to say a PA risk machine from like the late 90s, and it's actually faster to walk the linked list than it is to walk an array. I, I could believe that. Yeah, no, uh, machines have changed shape and size, and you have to change what you do. Yeah. So I guess, you know, it's, I guess it's uh, eternal employment for uh, low-level programmers. Thank you, anyway, a good talk. Thank you. So it's been a little while since I looked at this, but um, I know for a while we were working on the problem where if you had, like, let's say, PMEM and you wanted to offload some pages, if you had a working set that was essentially larger than the amount of memory you had in a multi numa system, and we had a problem where the watermark was a little bit too low, so we basically thrashed pages between the PMEM device, the PMEM node, I should say, and, you know, and RAM. And my interpretation of that was that it's a little bit brittle for us to have these static watermarks. Um, to determine when we do reclaim or when we when we migrate, and I was just curious what your thoughts were on that, and if you think there's a future where we won't have watermarks, or we'll have something more dynamic. So I say I work on memory management. Um, there's memory management. And there's memory management. I I I I really consider myself a file system developer who doesn't have a file system. I I I mostly work on the page cache really, and then everything else that I touch, I do so out of necessity. I don't consider myself a real memory management developer like Johannes or Mikhail or or Blastmil. Um, pe people who who understand the nuances of watermarks and of choosing which page to reclaim. Um, I'm, I'm very much focused on the mechanics of um, what data structure are we storing these pages in that we are trying to reclaim, rather than choosing which pages to reclaim or how many pages to reclaim. Uh, I, I consider that black magic, but I still don't fully understand. So I'm sorry, I can't give you a really good answer to your question. If you're not a memory management person, then I don't even know how to like, power on my <laughs> computer, but fair enough. Very kind of you to say so. <laughs> I've got a question over here. Um, may I ask about the PTE manipulation? Is this somehow related to huge pages and THP, or not at all? Okay, that's that, that's actually a great question. Uh, so. Yes and no, uh, which is how you know it's a good question because I'm having to th carefully consider how to answer it. So um, that is not a useful, um, the, the, the new PT interfaces are not useful for huge TLBFS because huge TLBFS is by its nature always aligned. So you're always actually working on a single PMD or a single PUD two megabyte or one gigabyte pages. Um, and they have to be mapped aligned. And that, that, this is just how, how huge TLBFS is defined to work. Uh, and it makes sense, because that's what it's for. Transparent huge pages, on the other hand, the other half of your question, this absolutely helps with that. So the, the way we're progressing the MM is so that transparent huge pages are just a special case of folios. That, um, so what, one, one of the things is that you, 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 if you now M advise a VMA and then you take a, uh, the, that you want to use huge pages and you take a page fault on it, the, uh, the files, we, the, and the file system supports it, we will now allocate a two megabyte page and we will read into it 
and you will get a two megabyte page. But because we're doing transparent huge pages, that may not be aligned with your mapping. We do, we do try to align your mapping, but a two megabyte page will, will be aligned in the file. So it, it will occupy like zero to two megabytes, two to four megabytes of the file. If you've, if you've mapped it askew, either inadvertently or on purpose, and some people do do it on purpose, and we call these people sysbot, um, you, you, you will see PTEs being used in order to map a THP. And that's always been part of the design of THP. It's just that uh, it's now coming more, like it's, it's becoming a bit more prominent that this is how THPs are designed to work. I hope I answered your question. You're it. Thanks. Okay. okay. I, th I think we're done. Thank you.